Hi, I'm Lewis. I'm Katie. And I'm Nathan. And uh, today we're here at BAFTA interviewing the editor of Monsters, Colin Gowdy. Thanks for joining us, Colin. You're very welcome. Uh, so how did you actually become a, an editor? I, I left school when I was 15 and then I managed to get into art college for two years and then I went to Bournemouth Film School for three years. Um, and when I went to film school, I really only knew about directing. You know, you could see people that were directors, so you were like, that's what people do in movies. And then when I went to film school, I did direct films, I edited my own films, but I also edited all my fellow students' films. And I had a much more enjoyable experience editing than I did directing. So by the time I left film school, I thought, I don't want to do a, be a director, I want to be an editor. So then I went to the BBC and I managed to get on their trainee editor scheme. And I was a trainee editor for nine months and then an assistant editor and then an editor. So what films meant a lot to you when you were growing up? Um, I liked big action films because I grew up in a, a very, very small town with a single cinema and all they ever showed was big blockbuster American movies. So I didn't get to see any art films or any foreign films or subtitles of films, anything like that until I went to film school. Films as a child were very much mainstream Hollywood and British movies, you know, things like The Railway Children and um, just, the, you know, The Great Escape, all those things that are on every Christmas, really. Okay, so let's talk about monsters yeah. now. Uh, what was it like working with Gareth Edwards on the film? Um, I'd worked with Gareth before. We first started working together five years ago. Um, Gareth was the visual effects designer on a TV series I edited called Space Race. With Gareth, you talk to Gareth and he goes off and does the effects shot for you. And we were just like, we got on like a house on fire, we really did. And so then Gareth asked me to be the editor on his Attila the Hun film, which was also for television. He really enjoyed working with me on that, and I obviously love working with him. And then he asked me to do Monsters. The great thing about Gareth is he's got such a wicked sense of humour. Um, Monsters was definitely, in 30 years I've been editing, easily the hardest project I've ever done. I mean, easily. Um, but it was the most fun. because you just like constantly be laughing in the edit suite because Gareth's always cracking jokes and you just start bouncing one off of one another and it gets you through the pain of all the hours that you're doing and all the tortuous process of the edit, really. Makes a good film editor. Um, the ability to be a team player, definitely, because you're always working really to the director's vision and the producer's bank account, really. Uh, so you've got to be, you can't just be saying, this is the way it's going to be. You have to be able to take other people's ideas. The ability to communicate well with your director, understand what it is they're trying to get you to achieve from the rushes. The ability to work very, very long hours and to be a good storyteller, really, because you have to interpret the rushes, look at the material and decide what's the best way of telling the story that's in the script. What films do you think have good examples of editing in them? It's interesting because a lot of people will say that good editing is editing that you don't see. And that's true. I mean, you know, 99% of the time you, you're trying to hide the edits from the audience. Um, so that's a kind of a tricky one uh, to, to, to say. There are also films whereby the editing is part of the, the style is the content. I like films where you do notice the editing, but that's because I'm an editor. I mean, my favourite movie of all time is Apocalypse Now. And that's a movie that had a million feet of film shot for it. I would say as an example of great editing, Apocalypse Now. documentary and a full feature film? Um, to some respect there's actually there's no difference. When you're editing it doesn't matter what you're editing. If you're editing somebody's wedding video or if you're editing a major movie the, the discipline that you use in your brain as to when to cut from one shot or another, what material to put in and what material to exclude, it's always the same process. Um, the biggest differences on television are you're on such a tight schedule you normally on a, on a program, a documentary will maybe be five or six weeks. And on a feature film, you could be on it for almost a year, some films even longer. So there's, you're kind of running a marathon rather than a sprint. So you've got to have the stamina to keep putting in those seven day weeks for the best part of a year. Um, you want as many people as possible to watch your TV program. 
But at the end of the day, if they don't, it hasn't prevented that program from being made. With a film for the cinema, you're trying to make back a substantial investment of money by people paying for their cinema ticket. So you're also very mindful of, will the audience understand this film? Um, so you're constantly looking at the film and thinking, will they understand this plot point or that point? point? So on Monsters, because it's set slightly in the future, it's set in an alien world, as it were, our world, but it's a world that we're not familiar with at the moment, you're like, will they, how clear do we have to be about there being an infected zone? How clear do we have to be about there being a giant wall between America and Mexico? And all those things. So you're going through that process of how much information do you feed to the audience? On a documentary, for instance, if something's confusing, you have a voiceover which says, and then our person did so, so and so. So you explain in commentary, and you can always fix in commentary any little problems in a documentary that you come across. Uh, so there's that discipline which is, which is harder. How much of a challenge was it actually to edit Monsters? It was a massive challenge, and the reason for that was um, there was no screenplay, there was no script, and it was a scene-by-scene -scene breakdown of what he wanted to happen, and it had blue pages and black pages, and the blue pages were physical things that ca the characters had to do. For instance, uh, they have to get on a train and they have to lose their passport. But there were emotional things like, at some point during the filming, you have to reveal, Whitney's character has to reveal that she can't have children, and you have to be upset by the fact that you can't have kids. And that could be put into any of the conversations that the actors improvised during the next seven weeks of filming. And you could actually, with those hundred hours, make many different films. We just happened to pick the 90 minutes that tell the story that's in the finished film that's now on release. But in terms of how difficult that was, it's incredibly difficult. Because all the time you're editing, you're thinking, is, am I making the right choice here? So it was very challenging from an artistic point of view. And also it was very challenging from a technical point of view, because we were using all new equipment that had never, at the time we, we had it, nobody in the world had the equipment we had. The cameras were brand new. The software for those cameras was, was teething problems with that. And we were also in Mexico in the middle of the drug wars. So when we were editing, there were people literally outside the room we were editing in shooting one another. So it was quite um, scary as well as being quite artistically difficult. Is there a possibility that any um, deleted footage from the film will uh, be reinstalled for the DVD and Blu-ray? Uh, I believe it definitely is going to be. Um, with Monsters, people were already talking about, well, what's the four-hour cut like? And the four-hour cut was an editor's cut, it wasn't a director's cut, and I hope that never sees the light of day. Because it was literally my first bash at compressing down the movie to something that Gareth and I could look at and start working at. Maybe the two and a half hour cut, that's a very interesting film. Because um, it still has a lot of temporary visual effects in and sometimes I would just type in the words tank. Saying to Gareth, can you put tank in there? And he'd go, yeah, I can tank. Helicopter? Yeah, helicopter. And then he would later on put in those visual effects. And the two and a half hour cut is like that. Um, but it does tell the same story, but it's just got some more interesting background to the characters. So uh, things like that would be great to see those on the uh, extra scenes on the DVD, yeah. yeah.